it's about time I made one of these. I haven't really covered the uh, add-on reworks that happen for Ghosty, but I see a lot of misinformation going around, so I'm going to try and correct them with my own logic. Okay, so Philly's a good all-around add-on and can reduce the, re uh, reduce the need for long-range stocks. So you can basically just go right up to a gen and start stalking people. It saves a lot of time, but I wouldn't recommend running it if you're trying to learn, especially as it rewards the bad parts of Ghostface, such as uh, chase stalking and cheesing stocks by going up to gens, which I consider to be bad play style. For the most part, if you're good, you won't be needing it. The idea behind using Cologne effectively is to have people marked when you have someone else hooked uh, with the intention of uh, forcing a hook stage by preventing the rescuers from saving. Uh, however, this is not that necessary as the base um, mark time is the same as the hook stage time. So this will mainly come in handy if you mark someone before uh, you hook someone else, which as you can imagine, it's kind of niche. However, you can pair this with journal and it can form another kind of niche combo. Like if people are marked for a long time and also oblivious, you can slug a bit, but it's not that good of a combo. This is mainly a quality of life add-on with some minor gameplay advantages, but it feels so nice that I'd still recommend running it over everything that comes after it. It's really hard to go wrong here. Power recovery overshadows or is on par with all similar add-ons, except for add-ons that allow slugging, and it alleviates the power loss from getting revealed, which is always nice. Uh, I have it in S tier because while it's not necessarily more powerful than some of the A tier add-ons, it's better to run this or Ghostface Cut and Tape than two non-recovery add-ons. It's also a lot less niche than something like Wallet. This one's just a beginner add-on. There's no strat you can do with this, though it's still overshadowed by Matchbook, so you're better off running that instead if you're learning. Also another beginner add-on, this won't help you if you're good. The best way to use this would be to uh, precede slugs by marking a few people, then downing someone else, and still being a threat to the people you've marked. So it'll just save you a bit of time as you can head for the oblivious person right after you've uh, gotten a down, and then you c you'll probably have your power back by then, and then you can uh, alternate between targets as you wish. Still a niche add-on, as that mark will likely end up getting wasted, though I think it finds some value on indoor maps, as you can have people marked, then uh, hook someone, and it'll be a lot harder to for them to go for a save. Though, you might as well run Matchbook again, because you'll have the same effect with just a brief power recovery time. Telephoto Lens is even less helpful, because you won't get any value if a healthy person reveals you. If they're healthy and you want to down them again, you'll have to use your power, which kind of defeats the purpose of them being oblivious. Getting revealed in general is dangerous because of survivor callouts. The only use I can think of this add-on is if they were injured and they revealed you. Though uh, it's very easy for experienced survivors to play around that by staying close to another uh, teammate or uh, the aforementioned callouts. This is yet again overshadowed by a matchbook. Uh, chewed pen is not as good as it used to be. Again, it's not about getting revealed. You don't want to get seen at all because survivor callouts can be very dangerous. If you slug and you're having this issue, you need to work on your positioning. It might save you a bit of time as you can cross more open areas than you can without it, but you likely won't have a slug in the open anyway. Knife Belt Clip is also a really bad add-on as you need to combo it with perks like Monitor to get a substantial tear radius reduction, though your resulting tear radius of 12 meters isn't insignificant, and you'll only get use out of it when going after someone who's either injured or exposed, and again, you're better off actually getting your power back more quickly with something like Matchbook. You might think you're able to do some chase mind games with the crouch, but 
no good survivor is really going to fall for that, and you're better off using matchbook to get yourself back more quickly. Training wheels add-ons aren't really high on these types of lists. Perfume is here for the same reasons as Chewed Pen. You shouldn't be getting seen by hooked players at all, because if they get unhooked anytime soon, they can run straight for you with no consequences and get an easy reveal, especially if they have something like off the record. Most importantly, they'll just call you out to potential rescuers. I actually think Sheep is decent, because even a good ghost face will spend a lot of time crouched. On outdoor maps, you need to crouch to cross less covered areas, and some gens are only approachable when you crouch because uh, your regular walking sound is pretty loud. There's also some chase find games you can do while crouching, especially on shorter wall loops because it provides some ambiguity on if you went around the other side of the loop or not. This kind of thing actually does work against good loopers if you know how to use it. So uh, it can be a decent tool on taller loops. When I say short loops, I'm talking about the length of the loop itself. Uh, crouching won't really help you against car loops or something like that. So yeah, the importance of crouching cannot be underestimated. Wallet is something you see a lot in comp, but that's just it. I think you'll only ever get use out of it on some indoor maps. It's useful for a hit and run play style, aka on low visibility maps like indoor maps, and someone who really understands Ghostface won't need it because they usually won't be in a situation where it's needed. In these types of matches, uh, survivors will often stay near pallets until your location is known. However, learning how to lean properly as well as getting better positioning will allow you to be more on top of uh, survivor lookouts, and you'll have less need of this add-on. Getting your power back with breakable walls does allow for some slug potential, though on some maps like the game, you'll likely end up breaking these walls before you down the person anyway. Breaking walls early is generally good for Ghostface because it allows uh, more avenues to approach survivors, and you won't often chase people through these loops anyway. License is actually so good. It's useful on all maps, despite what people think. Uh, so on outdoor maps, um, there's inaccessible gens, which you can't approach because they're out in the open. So marking these will buy you a lot of time. And going off that, there is some maps where the number of good gens, aka gens that you actually can stock and approach, are really limited. So maps like Borgo, there's going to be about three to four actual good gens on the map and survivors might uh, rush these uh, pretty early on, so uh, license will give you really good value there. On indoor maps, it's also really good because you can just go around marking people and keeping your location uh, ambiguous. You might think you're wasting a mark that way, and that's true in some cases, though it's important to know when actually to use this add-on. Um, or when to actually mark someone on a gen. So good game sense will allow you to determine how quickly the gens are progressing within that uh, down cycle. So you can keep overall gen progress low while also getting downs. Without the sat on, you're gonna have to sacrifice one or two gens as you get a couple downs. A good baseline for th um, playing is that assume um, an unattended survivor will complete a gen every two downs. So rather than having to sacrifice a gen every two downs, you can uh, mark people on these gens and uh, keep them useful for later in the match, if you know what I mean. So overall, really strong add-on. It'll prevent unwinnable games, uh, like where there's lots of toolboxes present. I prefer to take this add-on when there's at least three toolboxes. So you can uh, contain the initial gen rush by focusing on marking one or two people that have really progressed gens early in the game, and then basically drawing out the early game as much as you can. When that gen push dies down, you can play a lot more comfortably. I think drop leg is a little overrated. It's not bad at all. Uh, people just rate it really highly for some reason. 
it's useful for marking and chase and it'll uh, let you play around small loops when you have some 199 when you get them at that loop though it's not really that useful for marking people at gens as it doesn't counter sprint burst sprint burst is the only time you need some sort of speed modifier on your side otherwise you can down the person without the drop leg monocular is really bad i think it's actually one of the worst purple add-ons in the game so think about this uh, there's someone with sprint burst they are about 16 meters away from you and they're uh, walking waiting for you to come closer so they can sprint away how many good survivors will reveal you after they start running they'll already end up using their exhaustion before they reveal you and your add-on will be useless sprint burst is one of the exhaustions that you need to be able to counter and this add-on does nothing against it it finds some use against dead hard i guess but um good survivors don't necessarily need to reveal you to uh be able to loop you so they can still loop you while also keeping their dead hard the only reason uh, in my opinion is the only reason in my opinion that this add-on is in c tier not d tier is that it actually finds some value against background player which is the other exhaustion that you need to be able to counter as it can be pretty dangerous uh, if a background player person reveals you uh, you can use that opportunity to pick up someone that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to though again they don't necessarily need to reveal you to get value out of their perk and you'll still be in a lot of danger if they just decide not to reveal you if they somehow know that you have the add-on i know some people like ops uh rate it decently but um i don't think he put enough thought into how the mechanics of the add-on actually play out and it ends up being way more useless than he thinks on the other side of the spectrum we have victim's detail routine I think it's actually Ghost Trace's best add-on right now. I'm not even exaggerating. Sprint Burst is something that can actually deny you your win con, like straight up, and there's nothing Ghost Trace has that can actually counter it other than something like play with your food and this. Let me rephrase that. If the survivors do everything right and there is at least a couple of Sprint Bursts present, the game actually becomes unwinnable for you. Sprint Burst in general forces you in an m1 chase and as you know it's really hard or inefficient rather for an m1 killer to win such a chase you might think it's a good option to just go for another person on a gen but like i mentioned earlier uh, the number of good gens on a map especially outdoor maps are really limited so uh, you can have people with sprint bursts for working on the unsafe gens and you won't be able to get them while the uh, people without the perk can afford to work on the safer gens like the more open gens or the, the ones that can be or guarded i mean you might think that makes ghost face really weak but uh without sprint burst uh you should always be able to have some sort of winning strategy that's what makes this add-on really strong the other reason is background player um background player is really strong in the current version and it can deny you hooks in a way that few other perks can. So once you understand that, you need to determine the add-on's actual effectiveness against these perks and what makes it so different from something like Monocular, which is so low on this list. There's another thing you have to understand. Marks are entirely in your control. They're not situational. As in, if you see someone, you'll know whether or not you can actually stock them there. It's not like a fighting game where it's like a 50-50 probability. Uh, this is like a skill that you need to learn to perfect over time. As in, you know which gens you can or cannot stock. So if uh, a sprint burst player is on a gen that you can't approach, you wouldn't be able to get them anyway uh, because the gen's bad. But if they're on a good gen and the sprint burst is preventing you from actually downing them, you are able to uh, mark them if you're actually good at ghost face and uh, deny them the speed boost in other words this will play exactly the same as if no one in the lobby had sprint burst 
and going off this, um, being able to budget be your time between good and bad gens uh, is what separates the good Ghostface players from the actual masters. You need to learn how to instantly recognize the quality of each gen and uh, planning your down so that the gens that are remaining are uh, winnable for you. So you can't have uh, too many bad gens remaining or else you'll lose the 1v3. So yeah, VDR alongside license are one of the few things that uh, prevent unwinnable situations. Regarding background player, um, if you mark someone quickly, you'll have a much better chance of picking someone up out of pallet or uh, out of flashlight range. You'll likely end up wasting the mark, but that's not a big deal. Uh, you'll also find some value against dead hard. I um, often stock injured people anyway in case they decide to heal up, so uh, you can deny that as well and that's pretty helpful. I actually run VDR pretty much every round these days, and yes, uh, you can have a net increase in purple add-ons even if you run them all the time, so uh, don't be afraid to run it. If you play Overwatch, you can treat it like a Sombra hack that cancels abilities. I actually think there should be some sort of base kit ability cancel, as in like exhaustion for uh, marking people, like maybe 1 or 1.5 seconds of exhaustion, but that's just me. I just don't want there to be unwinnable situations because of perks uh, like Sprint Burst. Next we have Ghostface Caught on Tape. Uh, it's an excellent slug add-on, huge time saver on most maps, and especially lethal on indoors. It's great for contesting saves. Uh, it allows for two marked downs rather than just one, oftentimes keeping the person on the hook rather than having to concede to the trade. Uh, elaborating on that, if you have two people 99 and you uh, can only efficiently mark one of them, it ends up happening so uh, that you end up downing uh, one of the marked players and the other one will be able to go for the save while you're in your power cooldown. But this add-on will prevent that. It's also really good in the 1v3. So in the 1v3, you can actually just slug. And the only thing stopping you is your power cooldown. Earlier in the match, though, uh, you likely actually need the hook for your slowdown perks, and uh, match hook will do just fine for that. The instant recovery is also a little misleading, because uh, you need to understand that there's like an init cooldown to your stealth because when you down someone you're always going to get called out and it's going to take you some time to regain your ambiguity. Overall though you could probably place this and matchbook closer together. Security camera is also really good. You can't understate the value of tracking for Ghostface's power. Early tracking or at least knowing where everyone is earlier in the match allows you to force hook stages uh, earlier than you normally would, which is Ghostface's biggest win condition. It'll also help in other ways, like being able to contest general hook saves and um, being able to stop things like pallet and flashlight saves, as well as uh, being able to track people that might be more vulnerable or dead on hook. Ghostface doesn't really have any tracking on his own, so you'll likely end up using one or two perk slots in this aspect, and uh, the add-on will allow you to save one for something like slowdown. For some reason, I forgot to discuss the address book, but uh, I wouldn't really run it nowadays. Realistically, it'll only help chasing people at tile loops, uh, particularly jungle gyms, and that's pretty much it. You could say there's more windows on indoor maps, but these windows chain into each other so much better than an outdoor map that you won't get much value within the chase anyway. So that wraps it up. I try to keep it concise, but this is actually one of my most researched topics, so I'm aware of uh, all of the differing opinions, so feel free to state yours. Thanks for watching, good luck, and have fun out there.